Okay, so this is a review of our force of friction equation and then what we can use it for. So in review, force of friction, F sub F, that stands for the resisting force, the force that opposes motion or opposes the intended motion of an object. Um, that force is going to be equal to this thing that we call mu. It's a Greek character. What we call it is the coefficient of friction. And so what it is, is it's a ratio. It's a ratio that actually is the ratio between the resisting force and the normal force or the pressure uh, between the two surfaces. So that ratio, basically what it does is it describes how smooth or how rough a surface is, how sticky or how non-resisting a surface is. So something like uh, sliding on, say, um, a smooth surface like a slip and slide, that has a low coefficient of friction. It's slippery. Whereas if you go and you try to do the same type of slide on something like a rough surface like a slip and slide made of sandpaper, you're not going to go as far. One's going to hurt a lot more than the other. So um, this is our equation for force of friction. Okay, again, it involves this coefficient and our normal force, which is uh, an old force that we talked about. But the purpose of this video really is to show you guys a couple examples that we can use to help us through um, understanding this a little bit better. So anytime we get friction forces or anytime we get normal applied in, in all of those forces we want to draw a force diagram so I'm gonna read this and then I'm gonna decide what forces need to be put in my force diagram so a little boy pushes the 12 kilogram box of library books at a constant speed now this is a very important thing to point out because from our previous video we know that constant velocity means that all of the forces are gonna add up to zero our ups will equal our downs our lefts will equal our right so that's important to know um, he applies a horizontal force of 96 newtons, so it says draw a free body diagram, force diagram. Calculate the weight, normal force, friction, coefficient of friction between the box. So I'm going to start like normal and just draw the force diagram. Okay, going through the problem, a uh, 12 kilogram box means that the force of gravity is going to be 12 times 9.8, and that ends up being 96 newtons. Check that, that's not true. Let me punch that in real quick. So 12 times 9.8 ends up being 117.6. I was looking at the wrong number. Okay, and so since I know this is on a flat surface, I know there's got to be a normal force. And I also can assume, because it doesn't say anything about acceleration, that these two forces balance and cancel. So right away, I can say my normal force is also going to be 117.6 newtons. Now we're told that he pulls at a horizontal force of 96 newtons, so that means there's going to be a force applied of 96 newtons. Okay. Since it's a constant speed, since I know my forces all cancel out, I know my left forces will equal my right forces, which means the resisting force acting against the way that this kid's pulling the box is going to be equal to the applied force. So that tells me my force of friction is going to be 96 newtons. Okay, so let's just look, calculate the weight, that's this, normal force, that's this, friction, got it, coefficient of friction we got to find, okay. So um, back to our <clears throat> equation that we just talked about, force of friction is mu times force normal, so this is asking us to solve for the coefficient of friction. So force of friction is equal to mu times force normal, and so my force of friction, 96, my mu is what we're looking for, my coefficient of friction. My normal force is 117.6. So I would divide both sides by 117.6 to get these to cancel. And then my coefficient of friction ends up being 0.81. There's no label on our coefficient, by the way. It's because it's a ratio of force and force. So the force label cancels, and this is simply a ratio of those two forces. So got everything we're looking for okay this next one's a little bit more tricky because it doesn't have forces that all cancel okay we'll just go through it and we'll talk about it as we go so museum curator pulls a 1470 newton sculpture across the museum floor so when they're talking about the sculpture being 1470 newtons I'm fairly sure that's the force of gravity or the weight of the sculpture okay acceleration is 0.05 meters per second if the coefficient coefficient of friction, excuse me, is 0.57, we want to calculate all this other stuff. Okay, so again, I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and I'm 
disregarding all of this stuff I'm supposed to solve for, I'm just going to make a force diagram of everything I can make first, and then we'll go back and we'll check and see what I got. So I think this is weight, and it is, actually. So that's talking about our force of gravity. So we have 1,470 newtons. And now that we know that, we also should know that the force normal, because it's on a flat surface, because it's being pulled horizontal, there's no vertical acceleration. Therefore, our vertical forces will cancel. So this also is 1,470. Now, it looks like it's pulling it 0.05 meters per second. Since that's positive, I'm going to say that there's got to be a, a, a force applied. And since there's a acceleration rightward, that means that my force of friction is going to be less than that. So I'm not given a force applied. I'm not given a force of friction. But I am given uh, mu, which is 0.57. And I am getting an acceleration which is 0.5 meters per second squared. I still am kind of stuck with what I can do. I guess I could probably use my normal force and my coefficient of friction to solve for my force of friction. So uh, this is going to be 0.57 times my normal force. That ends up being 837.9. So my force of friction is 837.9 newtons. Okay, I cannot say these are equal because there is an acceleration. So I guess what I need to do now is try to figure out this. Or I have an acceleration. The acceleration is rightward, which means my applied force is larger than my force of friction. That means I have an unbalanced force. And anytime we have unbalanced forces, we use FUMA. So I have the acceleration. I don't have the unbalanced force. I don't have the mass, but I can find it here, right? Because we know force of gravity is mass times gravity. So if my force of gravity is 1470, my mass is what we're looking for. Gravity is 9.8. So I would divide both sides by 9.8. That gives me a mass of 150 kilograms. So I do have a mass, which means I can find my unbalanced force by taking 150 times 0.5, my acceleration, so I get 75 newtons as my unbalanced force. Okay, So now what that tells me, again, we know we're accelerating rightward. We know my force to the right is bigger than my force to the left, which means that if I'm to try to find my applied force, I would have to then use this, add it to my force of friction, so that this is 75 larger than that. So my force applied is going to be 837.9 plus 75. That ends up being... 912.9 newtons. Again, we took that by finding our unbalanced force. We know that this, this force is smaller than our applied force because we're accelerating, right? So this plus this will get us our applied forces. I know that should be larger. Okay, so let's see if we did everything. So we said calculate the mass. We have that. Normal force, have that. Friction, yep. Uh, force that he's pulling at. Got it. It looks like we have everything. So that's one type of problem. Now, the last type of problem that I want to work through and go over with you guys is one where we might be on an inclined plane. So we have a skier, 100 kilograms, going down a 30-degree hill. What is the coefficient of friction between the skis and the snow? Oh, there it is, constant speed. So if it's a constant speed, that means we know, excuse that, all of the forces are going to add up to zero. So when we do this, again, same deal. I almost always start by drawing a force diagram. So 30 degree angle for the hill. Here's my skier. I'm going to represent him as a box like all other force diagrams that I do. Force of gravity down. That's going to be 980 newtons. We have a force normal. We have a force of friction. And then again, anytime we have a force at an angle, that means we can break it up into our force of gravity in the y and force of gravity in the x. So now that we have those, I guess I have to use trig to solve for anything that I can solve for in this triangle. Okay, So that's going to be 30 degrees if this is 30 degrees. So I'm going to use sine and cosine to solve for these two forces. So I use the sine function to solve for the force of gravity in the x direction. It was sine of 30 times 980 to get 490. And then the cosine function to get my adjacent side here. So it's cosine of 30 times 980 to get 
849. Okay. So again, constant speed tells us a couple things about that. It tells us that our sum of all of our forces are zero. Again, we know that means our forces up will equal our forces down. And that also means our forces left will equal our forces right. Okay. So, you know, if, if we're thinking up, down, left, right, I'm going to turn it so it's like that. So up, down, left, right. So that means this and this are going to be equal, and this and this are going to be equal. Okay, back to the normal. But So that said, if my force of gravity in the Y was 849, so is my normal force, 849. Okay, if my force of gravity in the X is 490, well, if I'm going at a constant speed, the force opposing that motion, keeping me at constant speed, is also going to be 490 newtons. Okay, and so this question is asking us to find the coefficient of friction between the skis and the snow. That means that we need to use our force of friction equation to solve for this. We have our force of friction. We just solved for it here. We have our force normal, and so we can plug our numbers in. Force of friction is 490. That's going to be equal to mu times our normal force, 849. And so if I divide both sides by 849, do that real quick, I get a coefficient of friction of 0.58. Again, no label here because it's a ratio of a force over a force, and that cancels when you do the math. So. It's also under 1, which tells me I probably did this right. Most coefficients of friction are under 1. But that's, again, uh, a quick recap, quick summary of our coefficient of friction and our force of friction stuff.